Hello, everyone, and welcome to Spiritual Mastery for Lightworkers. I'm Rosemary Levesque, and I'm delighted that you're here with me, either in person or watching uh, the recording and participating that way. Um, and very delighted that that you can be here with us. So tonight we're talking about purification as a topic that uh, has been close to me a lot recently and you'll see uh, why later on but also it feels really important to talk about one of the first webinars I did earlier in the year was about making room for spirit so if you haven't watched that one I encourage you to watch that as well and that one had to do with uh, sticky energy and holding on to stuff and this one feels a little different. This one has some other aspects that feel important to express to you tonight and I would love your feedback on it as well. Have a journal handy. Before we begin, we're going to also set the, uh, set the intention and uh, a space and a container for our intentions. I'd like you to have a journal ready and we'll have some questions during this time you'll have an opportunity to write I have several topic points to go over with you we'll also have some open discussion if you'd like to participate um, I have at least one meditation in here for you to participate in and some opportunities to discuss as well we'll go over some tips and uh, tools that you can use for purification along with some personal experience I can share with you some next steps and there is a special offer I have at the end of the webinar so stay with me if uh, you have uh, if you can for tonight I would love to hear from you and have you take advantage of that special offer it's a, a free offer we'll have some closing thoughts and of course this is being recorded this webinar is recorded so it will be posted you'll get a link to it if you are on my list and I'm delighted to share that with you so if you have not been to the spiritual mastery for light workers online master class it's a live call and as long as I uh, you're here I wanted you to know also that tonight is going to be my last spiritual mastery online webinar in this series and after this point we will continue to do work together but it will look a little different and I'll share more with you on that if you are on my list and you can get on my list by going to secondnaturehealing.com or sending me an email now we are a group of like-minded people if you're on this webinar you have been on a path of the healers journey and in walking your path of the healers journey you're becoming aware and awake of talents and abilities that you have as a healer and what it takes to be a healer in the world and tonight's webinar on purification is going to help you in some aspect of the healers journey so I'd like to first of all go ahead and state that as participants in this class we agree to honor time and space for ourselves and other participants being respectful of opinions and states of being we are all somewhere on the path right so let's all agree to be open honest and respectful of this confidential time as opportunities present themselves for discussion and we also honor your choice to be a listener and a silent participant and if you can just all agree uh, to that affirm either silently or nod your head and agree yes you uh, you go along with that so take a moment now to become aware of your breath close your eyes I call upon guides and teachers of 100% pure love and light 
archangels, ascended masters, and all of our guides for spiritual mastery to be with us here tonight for this highest of journeys, highest of intent for our healer's journey to move forward on our path with ease and grace, to come into effortless spiritual awareness. And so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you for these blessings. What is purification? I actually had to look it up <laughs> because I thought having a definition or something to go by might make more sense, uh, at least in the beginning. So what is purification? And I discovered that a very good analogy for us to make is if we were to consider the physical purification of water. Water purification. This is something that has been going on for many years. And of course, the earth does this all by itself as best it can. And people will do water purification so that they can make the water potable, drinkable. Purification is a removal process. So something is taken out in order for something to become pure. There's also a part of purification which could be a treatment process. In other words, something is done to the entity, the water, the being, in order to help it become purified. And there is a goal in mind for purification. Why? Why do we want to purify? Well, in the case of water, we want to make it fit for a purpose. In the case of a person, of course, we want to make ourselves fit for a purpose, in a sense. We want to meet particular standards with our purified water. We want to make sure it's uh, able to be used in some way. Water that is destined for drinking might be different than water that is destined for bathing or water that is uh, just destined to be used in an outdoor pool or a uh, koi pond. So there are many standards by which we can say water can be purified. Purification is also a foundation for wholeness, health and well-being. For water, I like to think of water as uh, gosh, really good all by itself, right? H2O, water, doesn't exist by itself very much. It's usually combined with something. If it's in the ocean or in lakes and streams, if it is in bodies of water or in groundwater, it is saturated with uh, energy. It has oxygen in it. It has minerals in it. And uh, magnetism of the earth is in there as well. But also in water, in the earth, there are other things that are in there. So things that we don't necessarily want. So why purify? Because we want to make it fit for a purpose. So just keep those in mind as we move forward. Energetically, we want to be able to release stagnation. We want water to flow. If water is turbid, if it is full of sand and silt, it really isn't safe to drink. It is cloudy. It is filled with particulates. And we want it to flow. And just like our energy, we want our energy to flow as well. If energy is stagnant, in our body, perhaps purification would provide some movement of the energy through ourselves, through our bodies. And energetically, we want to improve the quality of pure essence. What is the pure essence of who we are? What is the pure essence of water? Well, the pure essence of water isn't just a distilled water. That takes all the life out of the water. Do you see what I mean? If I take plant clippings 
and try to grow them in distilled water, it doesn't work. There's no life in the water and the plants die. Plant cuttings also don't do very well in tap water. Even though tap water is measured, you know, standardized in some way to be fit for drinking, there are chemical additives in there and not everything is filtered out. So trying to grow plant cuttings in tap water also yields poor results. The water I use is living water. It is water that has been purified to a very high degree and has minerals added to it and it is oxygenated and it is energized with the energy of the sun and it is magnetized by the energy of the earth. That's the water I drink and when I grow plants in that water those plants thrive. It's amazing to see the difference. So if you're wondering if your water is good, you might want to try growing plants in it and compare it to other situations. Now, energetically, we want to be like that living water. We want to have all the bad stuff gone. We want to have all the good stuff in there and we want to be connected to the earth, we want to have that magnetism, we want to have the energy of the sun and the vitality of the foods and minerals and all of those things that we need and very importantly we want all of the stuff that doesn't belong in us to be gone. We want it to be not there right because if we're holding on to extra stuff just like the water that might have extra stuff in it we're going to feel that it's going to show up in some way for the water when we talk about water purification what is it they're actually taking out of water in order to make it drinkable well water today tap water, even though it's been filtered, has uh, measurable amounts of drugs in it, including chemotherapy, antihistamines, caffeine, toxins. You can find radiation in our groundwater and may, maybe it's showing up in our tap water. Agricultural and industrial runoff gets into our water supply as well and so if our filters which we have in place by the city were not designed to take out those chemical additives then they're going to be in our tap water and that has been shown to be true. What else are we taking out? We want to filter out biological contaminants for example bacteria, parasites, worms, algae, plant matter, viruses, fungi, we don't want that coming into our water. We don't want to drink that. It's got to be clean from that. And of course, suspended solids. We don't want any mud or silt in there, no debris. We don't want any waste in there, human and animal waste in the water. Industrial and agricultural waste also does not belong in the water. And so if we are trying to purify our water, we're going to look at all of those aspects, the physical components that we're filtering out to make the water clear, the uh, clarity of it from biological additives, things that are not, that don't belong in there, as well as any drug aspects in the water <laughs> that are not being filtered out because the filter isn't a very good filter. It's not a good enough filter. So um, that may be something for you to consider down the line is perhaps you'd like to have a good water filter that you take your tap water and you put it through. But for you as a person, if we use water as an analogy for our energy, our personal energy, and being able to purify ourselves, let's take a look at each each part of that. All right. So the uh, the chemical aspect. Do we have chemicals in us that don't belong? We probably do. Right. We have, if especially if we're taking deliberately taking any medications or uh, 
inhaling any substances, um, chemicals that we're using in our home, personal care products that we're putting on our skin, all of those things are getting into our body. Those are chemicals that we either inhale, apply directly, take internally. Those are all in our body and they are not part of our whole, they are extra. Some of the biological contaminants we have, we all have bacteria, we all have fungi, we all have parasites, they're all in there. There isn't anybody, I believe, who is pure of extra biological components. Now some of those biological add-ons are helpful. We, we want to have, we need to have gut flora. We need to have bacteria in our gut for a healthy digestive system. But we don't need candida uh, causing wreaking havoc in our body if our immune system is low. We don't we don't want to have candida causing skin problems and um, mucous membrane problems and all kinds of other issues. We don't want to have worms and parasites, but we do. And most of that is kept in check. And eventually, of course, that might be something that you want to purify, you want to deal with. They have an energy of their own as well. And they can affect our mood. They can affect our energy. They can change our vibration by being present in us. What about um, solids and gases and other things? Do we have some of those? We have, yeah, we do. We have toxins in the form of heavy metals that are being stored in fat tissue in our body, being stored in our joints and in our brain. Um, all of these heavy metals cause severe damage. They interfere with every chemical reaction in the body, every one, from the release of ATP from the mitochondria of the cells to the uh, formation of the myelin sheath around nerve cells and being able to have a nerve cell that is well insulated. If you have heavy metals such as mercury or lead, that's not going to happen. You're going to short circuit and that can show up or manifest as very serious neurological, uh, neuromuscular diseases, for example. So yeah, we don't, we don't want heavy metals, we don't need toxins, we don't need that debris in our body as a part of our physical being. So those might be things for us to purify as well. So Energetically, we want to release stagnation. We want to improve the quality of our pure essence. We want to create a vessel for spirit. Again, I'm referring to the webinar that I did earlier in the year, Making Room for Spirit. That was in all aspects, mainly in our environment. We talked about sticky energy, but also our bodies are the vessel for spirit. Our body is the physical manifestation of spirit. It's the container for our soul. And so we want to take care of our container. We want to take care of our vessel and have that be as clean and supported as possible. And of course we want to release or deliberately remove what isn't part of the whole. So I know I mentioned that, but I, I have a slide for you there. Now, in your journals, I would like you to take a moment and think of yourself as um, clean. I would like you to spend a moment defining, if you can, the word clean. What does being clean mean to you? Whether it's a physical clean, like you've just showered, an emotional clean, or a spiritual clean. So what does clean mean? mean to you. And imagine a time in your life when you felt clean. It could be right now, for example, or some other time. When was that that you felt really clean in any way, physical, emotional, or spiritual? And what did that look like and feel like? I'm going to give you just a moment here to write what is your definition of clean and imagine a time in your life when you felt clean 
When was that? And what did that look like and feel like? Now these experiences don't have to be obvious. They could be very subtle. Make note of anything regardless of size or degree of feeling. What is clean? If you would like to participate in any discussion, please unmute your line. Define clean. Hi, Rosemary. It's Brianna. Hi, Brianna. Hello. So defining clean for me is what you had talked a little bit about um, earlier is not having that sticky energy mm. and just feeling pe peace and calm. Oh, peace. Peace and calm. Those are wonderful words to use for clean. Yeah. Clear mind. Mm -hmm. Heightened senses. Excellent. These are great. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Peace and calm and heightened senses. Those go together, don't they? They do. Yeah. So how do they go together for you? How they go together for me is when, and I should use the word in tuned, mm -hmm. so in tune to my surroundings. So when I'm peaceful, I'm calm, in tune to my surroundings. My sense, senses are heightened. Mm -hmm. I smell things that I've. I might not smell. I hear things. I see things more vividly. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And it's like being more present, being now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So being here in the now is feels clean. That's wonderful. That's a great way to express it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for participating. Yeah, thank you. So the word clean actually means free from, free from something, uncontaminated, pure, innocent. And you can also use the word clean to substitute for completely, entirely, absolutely. So like I clean forgot, right? So the word clean is used in all of those ways. What are you free from? that makes your senses heightened? What are you f uncontaminated with that helps you to feel at peace and calm? Is there a pureness and an innocence in your cleanliness that uh, allows you to feel good? You know, we can substitute the word good here if you want to. So free from, that, that would be the one especially energetically, if you are free from that sticky energy, as you were talking about, Brianna, then perhaps that would feel clean. Yeah, if you get rid of stuff like we did in that other um, mastery class, if you get rid of the stuff and you notice what's there and you finally are free from it, that, that feels clean. Great. So I'm going to bring you through a meditation now. And I'd like you to jot down these questions or just have them uh, available in front of you if you're watching the screen. And notice, what was my initial intention or question in regards to this um, meditation that we're going to do, this journey that we're going to do? And where did I go? And in here, there will be a container. I would like you to notice, what did my container look like and feel like? And what process did I use to purify? What messages or information did I receive? And finally, what was my garment like?
So take a moment now, once you're done writing that, take a moment now to breathe deeply. We've done a similar meditation before. It was in our last webinar. Um, one of the aspects of a shamanic journey is having a drum and we have an internal drum our drum beat is our heart so I would like you to take a moment now to breathe deeply and become aware of your breath as you feel tension in your neck and shoulders melt away Become aware of your heartbeat filling your chest. Your heart begins to glow, empowered with the breath of angels and guides. Feel the temperature of your heart. Is it warm or cool? Does the illumination from your heart expand beyond you. Continue being aware of your breath and continue to feel the heartbeat. Imagine a distant drumbeat sounding in unison with your heart. You are safe. You are protected and guided. Take another deep breath. Hold this sensation with you throughout the journey. Return to your heartbeat, which is your drumbeat, if you feel yourself stray. Hmm. Acknowledge your breath. Acknowledge your heartbeat and offer gratitude for the peace they bring you on this journey. Notice that your heartbeat and breath are also in your awareness, supporting you on this journey. You're now invited to sit comfortably on the shore of a body of water. It's the most beautiful water you've ever experienced in every way. Notice your surroundings. Is the water an ocean or a stream, perhaps? How does the temperature feel? Is there a breeze or stillness in the air? What sounds are in your awareness from the shore? Take a moment to be in this most beautiful setting. An empty container appears before you. What do you notice about this container? And as you notice the container's qualities, you're drawn to hold it. Go ahead and pick up the container. Notice its weight and how it feels in your hands, its color and material, size and shape, and any designs that might be on it. This container and any other tool, artifact, or substance in your environment, in this beautiful space, are now available to you as something you may use on your journey.
your personal and benevolent guides now appear to you. You see or feel their presence over the water. They inform you that you have the power and ability to release now and forever everything that comes to mind or even what doesn't come to mind is something you want to release or remove from yourself. They inform you, I'm saying once again, they inform you that you have the power and ability to release now and forever anything that comes to mind that you want to release or remove from yourself. Knowing exactly what to do, you immediately follow your intuition. Do this now as I pause. And as you take part in this process of purification, make note of what you did and how you felt. And finally, if you haven't already done so, you're invited to go to the water. Feeling completely safe, protected, and at peace, touch the water. And as you touch the water, messages from your guides come through for you. What messages do your guides reveal to you? I'll pause now while you experience this moment with the water and your guides. What messages are you receiving as you touch the water? Making a note of these messages. <sighs> Return now to the shore. Dry off and put on a dry garment waiting for you on the shore. Offer gratitude for the experience. Return now to your awareness of your breath and heartbeat holding the rhythm and anchor for your journey. Breathe deeply and come back from your space. Assure yourself that you may easily return at any time to continue your experience or have a new one. Take a moment now to make any notes in your journal using the prompt you wrote down before we started.
Wonderful. Deep breath in. I'm not going to give you too long to write, but know that you can go back and add more notes later. I'd like to open the line now for any comments or discussion that you would like to share about your experience. Would anybody like to contribute to a discussion on what went on with that journey? So hi, Rosemary. It's Brian. Hi. Yes, hi. Hi. That was a, a wonderful journey. So mm-hmm. I will keep it brief. My space was a lake that I always go to in this one isolated area where you don't see people. And um, it was really interesting. The message that I received was, you are the roadblock to your potential. You have the power, and you are the power to remove that roadblock. Wow. Yeah. That's an important and a very powerful message. Yeah. So what did your process look like? What did you do to purify? So what I did to purify, so I had my my container was this bright ball orb of light. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I picked up stones and I picked up pieces of wood and my feet were actually in the water. So it was this connection with nature Mm -hmm. to purify myself Mm. is being surrounding myself with nature. I love it. That's great. And then um, I thought it was interesting. My garment Uh was a hide. Oh. Soft leather hide. Of course it was. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> That's interesting, but... Uh-huh. <laughs> so. Nice. So perhaps uh, do another meditation at another time and meditate with your garment this time. Oh, I love that. I will mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. When I was doing this meditation, the container for me was a bowl. It was a beautiful bowl, like a a singing bowl, something of sound. And I poured myself in to it. I, it's like I, I could tip myself upside down and I could just pour everything into the bowl. And when the bowl sounded, it was changing the vibration of everything that I put into the bowl. <laughs> so I thought, okay, that's wonderful. I love sound. <laughs> I love working with that. Well, thank you for participating in that meditation with me and for everybody uh, who's listening to this recording you can slow this down a little bit and pause as long as you like the point of not taking too much time on a meditation is uh, is to get kind of the the first message the first vision the first feeling because that's how spirit speaks to us spirit doesn't linger like we like to linger as humans we when we start lingering too long we get very much in our heads and we start thinking of things so when you're doing this meditation again don't take too long with it but get yourself into that safe and quiet and peaceful space connecting to your breath and your heart then do the meditation and quickly your messages will come quickly and effortlessly and those are the ones you want to record those are the ones that you're working with all right so that's just an extra tip for tonight I have a few quotes here that I thought were important to share mist to mist drops to drops For water thou art, and unto water shalt thou return. We are water. You know, the church, at least the um, Catholic church, 
that I grew up with uh, says dust to dust, right? For you are dust and unto dust you shall return. They completely leave the water out of it, right? They talk about the minerals, <laughs> the earth, but they forgot about the water. They don't talk about the water. And we're quite a bit water, aren't we? And water is in everything. Of course, minerals are in everything, too. I'm not discounting minerals. It's just that we are water. And if we can talk about purifying water that we drink, could we also talk about purifying our own internal water? So that was an interesting quote to share. Also, the soul has never become impure, not even for a second. And if it had become impure, then no one in this world would have been able to purify it. Hmm. So when we talked earlier about purification and cleaning, right, to be free from and to, uh, to get rid of things and to um, become clear, we're not talking about the soul. We're talking about the vessel, and we're talking about all the stuff energetically that is sticking to the soul, that is holding on to its position in the soul. So the soul itself is quite clean. The soul is quite pure. It is filled with light, and we should honor that as being the wholeness for which we are striving or toward which we are striving. Our soul is whole. Our soul is pure. Our soul is light. We are divine in, in our connection to all that is. We are a part of all that is. We're an expression of all that is in our physical nature. And so we don't have to purify our soul. That belief came with organized religion, that we had to cleanse our soul. We don't. We don't have to cleanse our soul. We have to cleanse all the things that we want to hold on to. Does that make sense? I know this is not a religious lecture. It's just that this quote to me means that we've been told something that uh, isn't serving us. We've been told that we're not good enough. We've been told that we're not pure, we're not clean, that we're not connected to the divine in any way. How dare we say we're divine, right? But you know what? We are. And that is the highest honor we can give God. That is the highest honor we can give back to God by saying we are a part of you. And we honor you. And we're going to do what we can to get rid of all this, this stuff that is an illusion that separates us from our wholeness. So this quote here maybe says it even a little better. The offering up or cleaning up ego stuff is called purification. Purification is the act of letting go. This is done out of discriminative awareness. That is, you understand that you are an entity passing through a life in which the entire drama is an offering for your awakening. <laughs> Don't you love that quote? That we are living in what we think is a real world and it is really a drama. And that's why we say in our conversation before uh, this webinar started, speaking with our guests, talking about saying, thank you for this experience, whether it's a good experience or a not so wonderful experience, thank you for this experience because this experience is in your awareness. You're having a, an opportunity in which you can learn something. You can let go of something. You can discriminate. You can discern if that's something that you want or don't want. And all of this, every bit of it in your awareness and in your non-awareness is part of the drama of being here in physical form. And it is all a part of the awakening that we have been talking about in our spiritual mastery class. So what do you want to purify? What is it? 
that you want to purify. Oops, let's go back. What do you want to purify? Do you want to purify your, what, your self, your diet? Do you want to shower? Do you want to um, change the kind of clothes you're wearing or the kind of food you're eating? All of these things are part of purification because the external part of who you are is reflecting the inner part of who you are. What Who you are on the inside always shows on the outside. It shows up in your physical form, how you stand, how you speak, the light that shines from your eyes, the um, choices you make. All of it matters. It all shows up. So if you are trying to figure out what to purify, here, let me offer some ideas. So how to purify. And these are some of the things that I, I can share as personal experience. I would love to have you share as well. One of the things would be to consider sound. And the experience I would like to relate to you is that um, over the past few months, airplanes have been flying over my house. Maybe I've mentioned to this, this to you before, but uh, it feels like the flight path of the Portland Airport planes, commercial flights, are they've changed their direction. They're going over our house all the time. And I... I would notice that when I take my dog out for a walk in the evening, most every evening in a certain window of time, I'd be out for half an hour and I would count four or five or six planes going overhead. Every few minutes another plane would go overhead and it was, I was very sensitive to it. It was making me a little crazy, honestly. I was very upset and had trouble sleeping. I was awake at night hearing the planes go overhead until I let it go and I shifted my thinking about it. I now call them my ohm planes because every time I hear a plane, I make the sound ohm and I just bring myself directly back to the sound of the vibration of the earth which is ohm and now I don't notice the planes so much I mean they're still there I'm not freaking out about them I'm not bothered by their sound as much as I was and sound and shifting how I felt about it I was able to let go of something that was bothering me that was making me edgy that was not good for me it was causing tension and it was not leading to peace so sound was one of them for me diet diet is something we can always improve upon especially when so much of our food comes from sources uh, well, all of it, almost all of it comes from sources that we don't grow. We don't farm. We don't do that. And so we're relying on food that was grown somewhere else, that was transported to a store, often in plastic packaging or some kind of container, uh, grown for its shelf life and processed in some way, perhaps, treated in some way, perhaps. And so when we consider our diet and purifying our diet perhaps in your awareness you might choose one or two things that you would like to let go of for me uh, more than a year ago it was ice cream I let go of ice cream <laughs> I apparently was addicted to it every evening I was having a little bit of ice cream and I don't do that anymore I don't even want it anymore so uh, find find what are the things that are catching your attention that are in your awareness that support you and things that perhaps don't support the highest expression of yourself so diet would be one maybe maybe it's an attachment to something is there something you eat all the time take a look at what is it that you are eating all the time 
try to discern do you have an attachment to it if you have an attachment to it then perhaps it is not serving you and perhaps you would like to let that one go and just see how you feel about it this is not a judgment thing this is a what do you need thing uh, some discernment is required here on your part uh, self-perception how do you see yourself a long time ago for me though I was intuitive I wasn't claiming it I wasn't honoring it I wasn't doing any of the work that I'm doing now and it took a while for me to develop that awareness and to develop the skills and to honor that I do in fact have this ability this talent this awareness of spirit speaking to me and through me and offering uh, guidance and wisdom and uh, enlightenment so I had to claim that I wasn't claiming it but I finally did and a lot of wonderful things have happened because I let go of my self-limiting beliefs I was afraid to express myself and who I truly was so my self-perception was something I had to purify habits oh aren't we all still working on our habits right uh, for me it's computer time I'm trying to spend less time in from front of the computer <laughs> and and I'm getting better at it uh, thoughts always looking for the good and uh, being a thought adjuster hearing what people are saying and noticing that it could be said perhaps a different way a more positive way and offering with kindness and compassion usually <laughs> except maybe in my master class yesterday I wasn't so compassionate at one point but finding the way to say things that show the goodness and show the highest expression of self so not just our thoughts but also our words uh, without judgment as well our environment um, for me clearing out so many things from our house when we were thinking of selling our house several years ago we got rid of years and years and years of accumulated things kids toys clothes I was not wearing anymore all kinds of things in my environment and I remember even here now in this den that I'm sitting in doing this webinar for you I had bookcases along one wall filled with books from classes I used to teach when I was teaching biology I had all kinds of biology books all over the place college books stuff and there was so much clutter in this room that I laid down on the floor and I looked up at the ceiling which was empty thank goodness the ceiling is always empty right and I called it my Zen den and as soon as I shifted that belief into having a clear space and seeing a clear ceiling and feeling the clean room I was able to free myself from all that stuff that I was holding on to so maybe that's a technique you would like to use too if you're in a room that is too cluttered or an environment that you're not appreciating find a clear spot and focus on that and appreciate that you, you can use the word Zen Dan I borrowed it as well relationships are there people with whom you resonate and people with whom you do not resonate well purification can involve a letting go or a releasing of relationships that don't serve you anymore that that really aren't supportive or in alignment with your beliefs of wholeness and well-being it's okay to say that you don't have to hold on to that anymore and what you notice is that you're giving yourself permission to be free of that and the relationships will resolve themselves the people who don't relate to you just won't be there anymore they won't be in your awareness as much there won't be the feeling of stickiness or regret or uneasiness or whatever it is that you were feeling 
Now I have several blanks on there. Of course, there are many things that you can fill in here. A long time ago, I decided, you know what? I just can't wear polyester anymore. <laughs> I didn't feel good in polyester. So I wear cotton, and I wear rayon, and I wear wool. So I released all of my polyester <laughs> out into the world. Not buying any more of that. Is there something that you want to release, want to let go of. You see, it, it doesn't all have to be metaphysical. It doesn't all have to be energetic. It can be a thing. It can be something that is challenging the way you feel about who you are and how you are in the world. So add to this list. Write down some things about how you might purify. So this is a how-to for you. And of course, if you would like to have um, personal discussion on some of the things that uh, would, would benefit you, but you're not sure how to begin, we can do that. But I'd like to open the line now and ask any of our listeners, is there something that is just jumping out here? Is there something out? on this list or on your own list that you feel that you could let go of or purify in some way? Hi, Rosemary. It's Brianna again. Hi. Hello. Um, the two that really jump out at me are environment. Mm -hmm. I think I need the Zen Zen. <laughs> I need to practice that. Mm -hmm. And relationships. Uh, yeah, I uh, hear you. Now, the environment, you mean uh, like in your home environment? Because you're an environmentalist as well, right? Yes. Yeah. So talk to me about that, your home environment and your environmentalist background. So what – um, I – I tend to hang on to things because of who, like, I got them from or who they used to belong to. Mm. Like, it's, I've created on for some things, like, they, be, they become maybe that person. Like, oh, my great-grandfather gave me this. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. But I'm now realizing it, it's, Things it's the memory of my gr my great grandfather. Mm -hmm. He's not the thing, right? And right. so it's starting to process that detachment mm -hmm. from the item. Yeah, if that makes sense. It does make sense. And as you're talking, I'm thinking I've got some of that stuff too. <laughs> you know, I have my grandmother's watch, for example. Uh, so I, I understand. I hear you. And it's okay to hold on to these things if it has a purpose, if it has, you know, a good memory and and you feel good about it. Uh, it's okay. There's no, I'm not saying you have to clean everything out and be minimalist at all. I'm not saying that at all. But there are many things we do hold on to that don't have a purpose. And I, I guess, like, I have a lot of things from relatives, oh. and, and so it's it's more of the quantity, mm. and then I've just been hanging on to it. Oh, well, this used to be so and so's, mm -hmm. and it's like, but it's sat in the drawer for the last five years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but every time yeah. I look at it, I'm like, ooh, but that's so and so's, and so it's it's just serving the purpose for. It, it's not really serving a purpose. It's the purpose is for me to go, oh, that brings back a memory of that person. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. But I, but I have those memories inside of me. I don't, uh -huh. I'm realizing I don't have to have that prompt. Uh-huh. have that same feeling. Yeah, I hear you. I can relate to that, actually, uh, in my experience, if I may. Yeah. Um, after my mother passed away, there were a few things, clothing things, that I held on to for a long time. One of them was her bathrobe. And the reason why I held on to her bathrobe is because that was what she was wearing when I got my last hug from her. Hmm. And it was just, you know, 
when I wanted to feel a hug, I'd put on the bathrobe and I'd I'd go there, right? But then I realized, oh, I don't really need to do that anymore <laughs> because she was with me in so many other ways mm -hmm. that I didn't need, you know, a bathrobe taking up space in my closet. And and truthfully, it brought sadness to me. It didn't bring that feeling of happiness of the hug. It brought the sadness of leaving. So I, I got rid of it. It wasn't serving me anymore. And I got more space in my closet. <laughs> yeah, we we have to go through those things and really honor if you are ready to release it because that's part of our drama, using the word from the quote. It's part of our existence, part of our being. In order to be able to grow and and use that discernment, we we have to decide for ourselves. Nobody can tell us when we're ready to do something. That's part of our journey, right? We have to honor the journey. Yeah. Yeah. What about the relationship thing? I, I think you've mentioned this on previous webinars as well, I, right? I have, and um, I'm I'm realizing just because I have known someone for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that it, it's okay to say that was, you know, I I appreciate having that relationship, but it's okay for me to distance myself from a relationship that's been unhealthy? Mm -hmm. And are you having to distance yourself, or is it happening happening naturally? Um, a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, I would say it's a little bit of both mm -hmm. because I'm setting my space of saying this is this is my my boundary or this is my space mm -hmm. and um, and I don't know how to express that but you know um, someone uh, like leaving messages and messages and messages and messages and and gets kind of frantic. Um, but but it's okay to say I you know I am a different person now and that's the conversation that I've had to have. I'm not the same person that you knew 20 years ago. Wow! And you've said this to the other person? I have. And, wow! And that I'm I'm in a different headspace, a different frame of mind. I'm not that same person, and and this person keeps saying, No, no, but you are. You are. I know that you still are. I know you're still that same person. And I'm like, no, I'm really not. Uh-huh. Yeah. Emotionally, I am not that person. Well, you're even different from when I first met you. I hope so, in a good way. Yes. <laughs> okay. You're good more, way. Brianna. You're <laughs> more. <laughs> and and that's, I'm I'm realizing that, using your words, that I am more and that I am different and it's okay for me to acknowledge who I am and this is who I am now. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, the, the word identity is coming up here. It's how we perceive ourselves based on how others see us, right? So for the person who is not self-aware, who has not done any purification or releasing or any skill development on self-awareness, they are the person that other people say they are or who they've had to be over years. You know, they had to be mother, wife, caretaker, um, employee brother, sister, you know, whoever. They've had to be that you know, volunteer. <laughs> you know, however you are uh, pinned as someone somebody else knows, and then you have become that, and that has become your identity. So some of the people that I talk to talk about that, about wanting to know what are they going to do next in life? You know, what's their purpose in life? And and really, they have to figure out who they are first, mm -hmm. not 
not who somebody else says they are or who they thought they were based on their job description. <laughs> we have so many job descriptions, right? Yeah. But that's not who we are. We're not our job. We're not even our name. We're not our we're not our relationship. We're those are things we do, those are people we know, but that's not who we are. So remembering who we are is our biggest task. It is our greatest purpose, remembering who we are and awakening to that, getting through the veil. Well, thank you for sharing, Brianna. Thank you. So we're almost done. Uh, as we come up on just over an hour, I, I won't keep you much longer. And I just wanted to say that I really appreciate all of you being here and following the uh, the Spiritual Mastery Webinar and Healer's Journey series. These recordings will stay online as long as I am able to leave them online in this form. And I want you to remember that in spiritual mastery classes, we're, we're really never done. You know, there's so much more to do and so much more to discover. Uh, it's becoming aware, of course, and we have taken on the vibrations of illusions. I've talked about this before. We are living in a, a world where everything is... Yes, it's real because we're experiencing it, and yet it is also not real. It's of our own creation. It is here serving a purpose for us to help us grow in so many ways and interact with people and make a difference in the world. And, and our job here is remembering who we are and being able to transform illusion into wholeness, being able to let go of all the things that keep Keep us separate from our spiritual reality. Our spirit is present in our physical form, is present in this vessel. So the better we can keep our vessel, the cleaner we can keep our vessel, the more purified we can do that our, for our body, the better experience we'll have and the closer to that uh, ultimate light will be. We'll, we'll glow. That's what we're going to do. We're going to glow. <laughs> right here in physical form, we will be glowing. We will be illuminated and that's what we're working for, uh, toward. So coming up this fall um, will be an online series of classes. Harness Your Wind Horse is how it exists currently on my website. I would love for you to register for that or take part in that in some way. Uh, and I would also like to know what it is you would like to experience. What is your burning desire? What is your question that you have that you want me to answer for you? And uh, when you let me know your questions, I will give you a, here's a gift. It's after my thank you. Thank you for being here. But here's my gift. Um, a one-hour discovery session for the first three people and the first three people who tell me what is your burning question I would like to know and I'll give you a one-hour discovery session where we can talk about that but you have to email me immediately if you want that experience this will go out as a recording for you so if you're getting the recording and you're one of the first three people to email me then I'm um, Awesome. We'll have you down and we'll schedule it uh, as soon as possible. So once again, thank you for being here. The best way to reach me is through my website, secondnaturehealing.com. You can email me, rosemary at secondnaturehealing.com. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. I will end the recording and stick around for a few minutes. <laughs>